1784, a 12th century German romance forgotten for 400 years re-emerged from the shadows. In 1886, the Leeds Music Festival played host to the premiere of the Cantata by Arthur Sullivan, half of Gilbert and Sullivan, based on this story of a knight struck with leprosy and a virtuous peasant girl. By this point, it had not only crossed the Channel, but also the Atlantic, twice, far further than it ventured in its first 700 years. I'd like to take you on a quick tour through the 19th century afterlife of Dalma Heinrich, which is part of my postdoctoral project on Anglophone reimaginings of medieval Germany, funded by the Irish Research Council. Dalma Heinrich, which simply means poor Henry, was written by the German poet Hartmann von Auer in the 1190s and tells of the formerly handsome nobleman Heinrich's search for a cure for his terminal leprosy. He's told that should an innocent maiden sacrifice her life for him, he'll be cured. The daughter of his tenant offers her life for his, but Heinrich gets cold feet at the last minute when he peers through a hole in the wall where he witnesses a girl lying naked and about to be killed for him. After this change of heart, he receives a, mirac um, a miraculous cure instead, marries the girl and they both live happily ever after and, for good measure, go to heaven when they die. <laughs> The text was published for the first time in 1784 by Christoph Heinrich Miller, a Swiss teacher in political exile in Berlin, but he didn't translate it, so it remained off limits to most people. It took off at last when the Brothers Grimm um, issued it in 1815 with a prose translation, and this is the version generally credited with inspiring wide interest. Another major development for der Arme Heinrich occurred in 1836, where a Swabian nobleman named Gustav Schwab included a new prose translation of it in his Volksbücher, a collection of folk tales, although it has very little in common with other texts in the work. Um, Schwab gives the reason that he included it because of its angelic purity. Um, and his decision to include it probably prompted the next stage in its journey because it was included in two other collections which also refer to themselves as Volksbücher. Um, and one of these was issued by the next uh, man of relevance, Gotthard Oswald Marbach. Marbach was a prolific reinterpreter of medieval texts, and in the 1830s and 40s, he issued 34 books under the banner of Volksbücher. This particular publication was number 32, uh, published in 1842. And while previous translations had stuck reasonably closely to the medieval text, Marbach seems to have taken it upon himself to sanitise it for his audience. Um, most obviously by removing the voyeurism of peering at the girl through a hole in the wall. Although he does include some striking pictures which maybe put the voyeurism back in, making the audience into onlookers themselves. Later, in the 1840s, an English teenager was having German lessons and developing an interest in the Middle Ages. This was none other than Dante Gabriel Rossetti whose German tutor supplied him with various books. Now, one of these, although he doesn't say so, must have been Marbach's translation of Der Arme Heinrich. For when Rossetti produced his own translation of the text, he followed Marbach incredibly closely, omitting the hole in the wall scene and sanitizing the moment even further. Around the same time, Marbach's translation also reached the American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who used and cited it when writing The Golden Legend, his version of Dalma Heinrich, a play in 1851. Longfellow also removes eroticism from his source text, but he adds a dose of Faustian imagery, not least by a frequent appearances from the devil, who appears transparently wicked to the audience, but whose true identity is never suspected by the characters. Inspired by Longfellow's adaptation, Sullivan began to compose his cantata in 1886, working with Joseph Bennett. Longfellow's prologue had previously been set to music by Franz Liszt, with whom Sullivan had reconnected that spring. The cantata was a resounding hit, and was performed in the Royal Albert Hall in 1888. Sitting in the audience was Queen Victoria, who expressed her appreciation personally to Sullivan after the performance. So, 700 years after Hartmann von Auer then, his work had crossed continents and back again and been repurposed and reshaped for a new era. Thank you very much for listening.